Hello students, welcome to today's class. In this class, I will be discussing about the general introduction of a biology and classifications of uh, organisms. Uh, this class is basically um, focused for different kind of a competitive exams. So here I will explain the um, general topics first and then will give you a different multiple choice questions which are commonly asked in the different types of uh, competitive exams. So let me begin here. So what is biology? At first, biology is the study of living organisms. Okay, when we mean living organisms, they are basically the plants, animals, and microorganisms. So biology is basically divided into three major branches. Okay, and those branches are what? Uh, those branches are zoology, botany, and microbiology. Okay, now let's go in short, in brief about all of these branches. Zoology is basically the study of animals, whereas botany is the study of a plants. Under the microbiology, we study the different kind of a microorganisms. So it doesn't mean that there's only there are only three branches of a biology. There are other different several branches of a biology on the basis of study of their specific types. Okay, and the branches are actually simply expanding with a possible study by help of a different type of a biological tools and devices. Okay, so. Today's world I had actually even experienced genetically modified organisms. There's inventions of a newer branches. There's a inventions of a newer techniques. We are hearing about the different controversies about the genetically modified crops and the research is ongoing. And as the research is ongoing, the fields of a biology are simply what? Simply expanding and will continue to expand in the days to come. So, when we are studying about the biology, how can we forget about the, some important scientists and their contributions who had actually taken the biology to today's level, yes? And you might be asked a different questions related to the, um, start with some of the major contributor of a, in the field of biology. So Aristotle, yes, one of the very significant, uh, contributor in biology he is considered as a father of a biology he is also considered as a father of a zoology because his study is basically focused on animals he was the first scientist he was actually even the disciple of plato he was the first scientist to find birds and reptiles are nearly allied okay and he had defined the different various branches of a knowledge another important contributor is theoprastor which is considered as a father of a botany he had actually observed, he used to observe carefully and minutely about the plants. He described the plants analytically for the first time, differentiating it into different parts, okay? And he had actually grouped the plants into different categories. And his significant books, that is History of Plants and the Causes of Plants, those are one of the important milestones how can we forget about the Carlos Linnaeus, who has propounded the binomial system of nomenclature? He is considered as a what? Father of taxonomy. We will come to this word taxonomy once again. So he had actually given a two kingdom systems of classifications. He had classified the organisms in the hierarchical systems. He had, of course, binomial nomenclatures. That means system of giving two names to an organisms. The first name is considered as a generic name and second name is considered as a what? Specific name. Okay. So similarly, another contributor, um, Robert Hooke, uh, he is considered as a father of a cytology. He was actually the, even a friend of Isaac Newton. You might find it interesting to go through the um, history uh, or his journey along with a Newton also you might can inquire about it okay so he had actually discovered the shell in the year 1665 he had observed the Kirk cell from the microscope made by himself and he had given the term cella or cellula which means simply the compartment because when he had absorbed the cork cell under the microscope he had actually seen simply the compartments or uh, rooms that's why he had considered it as a what cella okay so now here's one MCQ question. So who is the father of microbiology? Here are Robson, Robert Hooke, Anthony Van Leeuwenhoek, Aristotle, easy to answer. You need to pause the video for a while and choose the correct answers. Okay, so yes, 
you might have third of the correct answer. The correct answer is what? Anthony Van Leaving Hook. Okay, Anthony Van Leaving Hook. Good job. Okay, so let's move on to the some other applied branches of a biology. Basically, in the applied branches of a biology, it includes the fields like agriculture, veterinary science, household biology, marine biology, etc. Okay, and which people are practicing in their day-to-day -day life, from where they might be get benefited and can draw uh, their livelihood as well. Okay. So here are again the few questions. To answer them, you need to pause the video for a while and answer them. Okay. So sericulture is wearing off. You need to fill the blank with the correct word. Apiculture, pisciculture. Okay. Pause for a video for a while and can give the answer. Thank you. Yes, sericulture is rearing of a silkworm, apiculture is rearing of a bees, pisciculture is rearing of a faces, and floriculture is rearing of what? flower okay and these are the different applied branches of biology so besides those three major branches and besides other applied branches there are other important branches or major branches of biology which we are going to discuss in brief again okay so morphology when we are talking about the morphology we are basically focusing on the form and external structure of an organisms and um, Organisms. We are basically discussing about the physical appearance of an organism under the heading morphology. Okay, and when we discuss or when we are reading about the animal anatomy, people uh, we study about the internal structure. You might have heard about the internal structure of a heart. You know there are different members in the heart. Similarly, in the liver, in the kidney, and not with just in case of an animal. Even with case of a plant, also we make a different sections, transverse sections, longitudinal sections. And when we are making the different sections, we study about the different kind of a tissues in the plant and when we are studying the internal structure of an organisms we are actually studying their anatomy okay histology means the study of a tissue cytology cell of course embryology means what a study of a fertilized egg and embryo taxonomy identification nomenclature and classification of organisms we will come back to this taxonomy again we are actually going to discuss about the taxonomy itself in this very class and genetics, we are going to discuss about the heredity and similarly the variations also. Under the physiology, we studied about the different kind of life processes, which um, uh, different life processes, uh, respiration, uh, photosynthesis, and all the different functional aspects of a life under the physiology. Okay, so now let us start. Taxonomy, I had just said that we are going to discuss about the taxonomic hierarchy. Let me go through this word taxonomy hierarchy. So what is hierarchy then? Hierarchy means it is a classifying system. Yes, it is a classifying anything either from biggest to smallest group or from smallest to biggest group that is considered as a what hierarchy. And actually, when we are doing a taxonomical hierarchy there are altogether seven ranks in taxonomic hierarchy okay so what are these what does this ranks means we are going to discuss okay every subsequent place of an organism is considered as a what taxonomic ranks okay ranks are also considered as a ranks are also considered as uh, categories they are also considered uh, considered as Taxon also, okay. So these are the different names given for the ranks actually. So there are what are those? Kingdom, yes, it might be division or phylum. We, we are going to this division and phylum again. Class, order, family, genus, and spaces. Okay. So whenever you are classifying an organism, you need to give a correct position for all of the seven ranks associated with that particular organism okay and how to memorize you might sometimes you, it, this it has to go in order either in a either in a what descending order or either in a which order ascending order you cannot just mix up the order so how can we simply memorize the order there's a sort of trick related to it let's go through it here's a one very sensible uh, sentence and when you remember the sentence i hope that it will help you to understand uh, different ranks of taxonomic hierarchy let me read the sentence first keep these spots clean otherwise family gets sick 
in this very sentence, the first letter of each word signifies the different ranks of a taxonomic hierarchy. So K here is for the what? Kingdom. D here is for the what? Division. Basically, we write division for animal. We write phylum for plant. Class for, sorry, C for class, O for order, F for family, Z for genus, and S for what? Species. So this is the way how we give a correct positions to a particular organisms, okay? So, let just continue. So what is the largest unit of a classification? Here's one MCQ. So what are the options? Let's go through the options. Spaces, family, genus, and the next one is what? Kingdom. Uh, you can pause the video for a while and think of the correct answer. Okay, very good. Yes, you are correct. The correct answer is kingdom. It is the what? Largest unit of classification. So let's move on to the topic that is what? Taxonomy. Under the taxonomy, we are going to study about the this um, identification, nomenclatures, and classification. First, we need to identify an organism. As we identify the organisms, we go into the next that is what giving name to the organisms. And once we give name to the organisms, we find the proper positions of that organisms in a taxonomical hierarchy system, okay? So taxonomy basically includes identification, nomenclatures, and classification of organisms. We will be discussing about the classification of organisms, this part in detail now. Nomenclature, we will discuss very briefly. Yes, basically there is a different systems of nomenclatures, yes binomial nomenclature, trino, trinomial nomenclatures. So under the binomial nomenclatures, an organisms got two names. The first name is generic name, and the second name is what? Specific name, okay? Uh, Carlos Linnaeus has actually started this system. Before, before uh, giving this system, actually there used to be a 15, more than 15 words, more than like six, uh, 20 words for a particular organism, which is very irrelevant for to remember also, okay? That's why there's a, a huge credit. So what is the smallest unit of a classification? We know the largest is what kingdom. So the smallest unit is what species. And group of interbreeding populations which produce their own clients, they fall under the spaces. The different spaces, they can interbreed with each others and undergo the what? Physiological process of a reproductions to produce the um, offspring of their own clients, okay? And actually, related spaces are kept under the one genus. Let me just go, go through the classification process that is classification of a plants and animal. Actually, classification of a plants and animal is very big topic. Yes, it's, it seems very difficult that to classify the plants and animals. And if we are not doing so, of course, the um, study of uh, their further study will be further complicated. So as per the report of 2016, there are one trillion spaces are estimated to be found on the earth, whereas only one thousandth of one is being described. Okay, described means they have been identified, they have been given name, and they have what? As they are identified, as they are given name, they are what? Properly classified. Okay, only few of them are described whereas rest of others are still to be described. And Carlos Linnaeus was the first person who first classified all the living organisms into two kingdoms, those are Plantae and Animalia, okay? So that he actually had started, so that um, this classification systems to simplify the study of organisms. So when we look back to the classification systems, again, there are again various scientists who had given up contributions. We cannot forget the name of a Haeckel who had added in the year 1866 uh, Kingdom Protista, then became the three kingdom classification system. Okay, you might be asked this very questions again in MCQs, okay, in competitive exams. So Copeland, almost after one century, he had added Monera to the group. Arach Whitakers, he had added fungi, and he had actually in the year 1969, 
he had given a five kingdom classification systems and this five kingdom classification and system is actually very widely accepted um, by the people all over the world okay and there is also the six kingdom classification system which was given by the Carl Woods which is a recent this uh, finding which can say in the year 1990 he had actually classified the organisms on the basis of uh, three different domains on the basis of uh, uh, 16 srRNA okay so we will be focusing about basically the five kingdom classification system which I already said is widely accepted classification system okay so Ardet Whitaker, Robert Hardik Whitaker, he had actually classified world's biota into five kingdoms. At present, many biologists believe that five kingdom system of a classification is best and widely accepted. So, and while doing the classification, he had considered in certain things. In, uh, so what are those considerations are, he had actually classify the organisms on the basis of complexity of a cell how complex is the cell okay is it um, is it uh, prokaryotic is it eukaryotic so is the cell on the basis of complexity of a cell similarly complexity of an organism so how is the organisms is it unicellular is it multicellular mode of nutrition are they autotrophic heterotrophic separatrophic and major what are they what is their roles in the community they might be producers they might be consumers they might be what decomposers similarly what is the direction of evolution on which other organisms they are closely associated with okay on the basis of these guidelines he had actually classified the world's biota into five kingdoms so let us start with the kingdom Monera. By the, let's look at this. On the basis of organisms, they are what? Unicellulars. On the basis of the cells, they are what? Procarriers. So the characteristics feature of a Monera are what? Unicellular procarriers. And they are the only, only um, kingdoms which are actually procarriers in huge classification okay so they are unicellular as they are unicellular they, they are basically minute and microscopic and they are prokaryotic organisms they do not contain a true nucleus and membrane round organelles the nucleus is represented by a cool naked strand of a dna which is one of the characteristic feature of a prokaryote basically uh nucleus consists is is a very well organized uh, structures in the cell, which consists of a nuclear membrane, nucleolus, uh, nucleoplasms, and chromatin fibers. Whereas in case of a mm, mm, monerans, they do not consist of a what? Uh, nuclear membranes. They are simply naked strand, and those are actually split in the what? Cytoplasm. They are also known as a decomposers or mineralizers in the biosphere they have various modes of nutrition they might be autotrophic they might be parasitic they might be symbiotic and saprotrophic so here are the few examples cyanobacteria and bacteria these are the basic examples of the kingdom monera so let again goes to the types of bacteria yes when there are basically four types of a bacteria archaebacteria when we are saying archaebacteria we are talking about the ancient type of a bacteria a for ancient, A for archae. So here might be a clue word or a hint, maybe what? A squared. So basically they are very, uh, as they are ancient bacteria, they can withstand very high temperatures and so extreme acidic conditions, yes, thermoacidophiles. They can withstand even the methanes, they are considered as what? Methanosens. And U bacteria means they are more than normal or true bacteria. Whenever we are saying bacteria, we are we have to actually understand them as a U bacteria. Okay. So here, when you are saying they are the true bacteria, T for true, yes, E for U bacteria, and N for what normal bacteria. So this trick might help you. Similarly, cyanobacteria, the, they are, those are the what blue green algae. Yes. So they are pigmented you can simply remember remember p for pigmented and c for what cyanobacteria so mycoplasma they are very smallest cells without a cell walls they are and 
as they do not have the cell wall, they are pleomorphic. That means they can change their set. This is again one of the most frequently asked questions. What is the smallest cell without a cell wall? So it is what? Mycoplasma CPLO is also considered as a pleuro pneumonia like only as they were found in the plural uh, membrane in the membrane. That's why they are considered as a what? Pleuro pneumonia like only. And as they are very minute, they are even considered as what? Molecules. Okay, so what is the largest cell? Ostrich cells, and what is the smallest cell? That is a PPLO, which stands for pleuro-pneumonia-like organism. Okay, and they are also called as a mycoplasma. Again, very important for the MCQs for a competitive exam. So unicellular prokaryotic prokaryotes are characteristic feature of the question is this. So let's look at the options. What are the options? Protista. Monera, Planty, and Emilia. Okay, pause the video for a while. Think of a correct answer. Oh, yes. The correct answer is what I had already said. The prokaryotes, only prokaryotes, they are the what? Monerans. Okay, so the correct answer is yes, the Monera. So multicellular consumers are characteristic features of, so options are Animalia, Planty, Monera, and Protista. Okay, so we cannot think of a Protista, yes. So you need to, you need to just go on canceling the options also sometimes to get reach up to the correct answers. Protista, we know that protistas are, are what? Again, unicellular, so multicellular. We, that's why we cannot go with the protista. Planty, yes, they are multicellular, but then planty are what? Plants are considered as a, um, as a producer. So the correct option is again, not planty, it is what? Animalia, okay. This is the way how sometimes when the MCQs are difficult, you sometimes need to what? Eliminate the wrong answer so that it will help you to the what? Correct answer, reach up to the correct answer. So thank you. We will be uh, studying about the protista in next video.